Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to talk about crankbaits and not just in general. We're going to talk about how to tune your design for wobble, <laughs> for shimmy, and for roll. So stick around. First, let me thank everybody for all the questions, uh, all the engagement uh, that this channel's getting. It's still a small channel, so your questions are getting attention. So thank you, and if you're enjoying this stuff, if you're learning from it, do me a solid and go ahead and subscribe and click that like. So I've had a lot of questions about general design for lipped crankbaits. So that's a really complicated topic. It has a lot of variables, everything from the shape of the bill, the length of the bill, the material the bill is made out of, the length and shape of your lure, the size of the lure, the weight of it, how, how, how quickly it sinks or how much it floats. All that plays into how it behaves when you're cranking it back. So I consider doing some long uh, multi-part explanation of the uh, hydrodynamics and I thought, you know what, that, that'll, it'll make me brain dead, uh, much less the poor folks watching this. So what I want to do is just take bite-sized pieces, things that you can use independently as you're designing your lure or you're modifying your lure. And in this way, you'll have uh, sort of a mosaic of information that you can go back to in these uh, videos and use as you need them. So today, we're going to talk about wiggle and roll. <laughs> So essentially what I'm looking at is how fast, what frequency is this lure going to wiggle at? And how big of a wiggle will it be? Are we talking about a really large amplitude or are we talking about a tight wiggle? Uh, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to give you some pointers on how to adjust that and how to get what you want. Assuming that, let's just say this is just center line of your lure. Your choice of places where to put that toe eye, the point where you tie on, uh, is pretty limited. You're not going to go too far uh, above the center line or too far below actually. So if you decide to go just slightly above it, right at it, or any spot as you go down or even right on the bill itself, that selection of location is going to make a big difference on how that lure behaves. Not just how deep it dives, which it does, it affects that, but again, we're going to try to stick at one topic at a time. But it's going to affect how wide it wobbles and how much roll it's going to be in the body. And so I don't get a bunch of folks angry with me, I'm going to remind you that this, these are generalities. There are going to be lures that aren't going to co comply with this rule. Uh, but Typically, most every lure is going to do what I'm about to describe. As you move your line from this connection to, say, that connection, in general, you're going to get, you're going to go from a very tight wobble, a very high frequency, low amplitude, uh, vibration in the lure uh, and as you move down towards the center of the loading part of the bill you're gonna get a wider wiggle higher amplitude and a lower frequency so a slower uh, wobble in the lure itself so along with that you're gonna get a change in how much roll is in the body so if you've been watching my videos you know that I like to demonstrate what I'm trying to get across to you uh, in my little mini lectures here. Uh, but here is a little test lure uh, that I, I made uh, quite a while back. This was specifically made so that I could tune this particular lure. And it works out really good because this is a wake bait. You can see it's almost a 90 degree to the center line of the body. Uh, and what that does is it allows me to video it close to the surface. I don't have to worry about doing underwater shots. You'll be able to see the wobble and the roll. So stick around to the end because that's when the interesting part comes. This tidbit is going to help you as you design your lure, but also if you're not a lure designer, if you only fish with lures, this is going to help you select lures right off the rack because when you're looking at a lure, you need to be able to 
sort of discern what that lure is going to do. The package is only going to tell you that it floats and it goes to three feet or whatever it says. And you're not going to know whether it has a very tight wobble or if it has any roll in it. Uh, there's a lot of folks, uh, I've heard a lot of bass fishermen talk about, well, I want a flat-sided uh, crankbait because it rolls. Well, that's not what makes it roll. The fact that it rolls has nothing to do with the fact that it's flat. It might be more obvious that it rolls because it's flat. So this information is going to help you select lures off the rack and it's going to help you tune the lure you're making. So let's talk a little bit about some of the limitations. As you move way up away from the center of force. Now there's a res what we call a resultant force. As you move your tie eye away from that center of force in the extreme far away from it it becomes a very tight wiggle and that seems like it would be very stable but in fact what it can cause is for your lure to spin along the length of the axis. Any kind of deviation in the, the shape of the body or the angle of that lip will cause it to actually corkscrew. That's problematic. As you move down and get greater oscillation or a deeper wobble, right, it actually helps to stabilize it. And as you move towards getting right to the point where you're aligned with this, it, it'll dive a little deeper, but it'll give you a very big wobble with a lot of roll. And that gives you the opposite, right? Now you have the tendency for it to barrel roll or just overly rolling to one side it becomes again unstable at this end too. Every lure has a sweet spot. You want to try to get that tie eye right in the sweet spot where it's easy to tune and it behaves uh, in a way that you really want it to behave. So what I've done is I've made, if you can see here, I've made this lure, you can see that very thin piece of plastic cast right into the body right along the center line and and then I bored little tiny holes in it uh, about a millimeter apart. This allows me to take it to the dock, tie it on it in multiple locations and decide where the sweet spot is. And you can see that there's a little black dot right next to one of the holes. That shows you where I decided that this lure would work best. So let's go down to the dock. I'll tie this on and hopefully we'll get some good footage of the wobble and the differences as we move from the top to the bottom. You can see I've added some stripes and a little bit of color on the bill and that's just so that the wobble will be easier to see, I hope. And what I want to do is I want to start right at the peak. So I'll probably go down uh, just a few of these uh, and then I'll show you what it looks like uh, where I decided to put the tie on eye. Right at the where the nose is and hopefully well, I don't destroy it while I'm doing this. You can see how very small that wiggle is. It's very tight. Of course you can tell it's a little out of tune but there's really no way to tune it with that plastic so I have to live with a little bit of a turn in it. Now I'm gonna move down to a point just the, the point just below my selected location okay you can see the wobble has really increased and you can see there's a lot more body roll in it let's go ahead and move it way down to right here where the bend is, right where the bend is. Let's see, just one or two more notches down. All right, so now you see where it is. So now you'll see that it's a little bit unstable. It's got a lot more roll than it does wiggle in it. You can see the tail isn't moving as much as the lure is actually just rolling. And that makes it pretty unstable and difficult. And you see it's really wanting, it's really wanting to do a barrel roll. So now I'm going to put it right there on that little black spot. That's where I chose for this particular lure to always put my hook eyes. That's a nice combination of wiggle 
and roll. It's very stable and at the same time it's got some good action. Now just for jollies because I know everybody's wondering let's put it up here beyond the point where anybody would really select to put a hook eye. So you can see it's pulling above the center line. Almost no movement at all. Let's see. And you can see it's really unstable. Once the barrel roll, barely, barely jiggling. See that? If it was just a little uh, more out of balance, it would, it would corkscrew. See, it wants to. Okay, well, that's my demonstration. Hopefully this helps you guys. Um, I assure you that it's even more pronounced. These differences are even more pronounced with lures that aren't so much of a wake bait. Again, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss any of the videos. If you got any suggestions, certainly put them in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.